So we're going to look at doing um, a bit of compositing in Cheetah 3 d today um, and by that I mean taking an object like you can see here and kind of throwing it into um, a photograph and making it look like it actually was there. It's quite easy to do. Um, so let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need is a cheetah document, new document, and you're going to need some kind of photo um, as your background. I've got one here that I kind of took on my iPhone, it's not high res but it'll do the job. I'm just going to load that into the camera background. Park.jpg I think it's called. Yeah, I'm going to load that in. Okay, so that's loaded in. And if we're rendering at 644.80, that'll do for now. So the first thing I do after loading my background in is, is try and get the grid to kind of match the perspective that I've got going on in my photo. So I use a combination of, I guess, rotating, panning, um, and zooming, and, uh, and everything really. Um, fortunately in this photo, we've got some quite strong lines coming down here, and... I'm going to try and match them up with the grid. So I'm going to bring the grid down a little bit. You can see the tools I'm using up here to do this. Um, until it's roughly right, it doesn't have to be exact. So we'll get that somewhere around there. Just rotate that around a little bit. I'm just going to zoom out because I'd like to use that red line as a real guide for this. This isn't the ideal photo you know, for a lot of reasons. Firstly, because I've got these kind of long winter shadows on, um, but it'll do for the purpose of this tutorial. Okay, so that's that's kind of cool. I'm, I'm happy with that. That's roughly right. We can always tweak this a little bit later. So the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to add an object, and I'm going to go for some extruded text. So I'm going to drop some text on. I'm going to select that text. I'm going to type something in. I'm going to type no vote. If for those of you that don't know, I, I run a web design company called No Volume. Um, that's why I kind of always end up with Novo or NMV somewhere. Okay, so we'll choose a font for that anyway. I'm going to go with um, I'm going to go with Alternate Gothic number two. It's one of my favourite fonts at the moment. But choose anything. Um, probably going to get better results if you go with something pretty, pretty fat, something pretty funky, nice chunky font. Um, loads of different stuff out there. I'm going to scale that up a little bit and I'm going to bring it back along the line and then I'm going to extrude it. So I'm going to drop this extrusion on and throw my text inside it. You can see that's already kind of extruded to a certain degree. Um, it's a little bit sharp so we're going to put a little bevel on here and the are going to use a type so in bevel settings we're going to use convex and you can see that's it has beveled it, it's done it in a single step, which is a little bit rough. I'm going to add some more sections to my extrude up here. I'm going to put five, and you can see that's, that's smoothed that right out. Now what you've got to be careful with, depending on what word you're actually creating, is that O's and C's and curved letters tend to drop below the baseline. Um, so they're not actually on the same line. So what I'm going to do is jump into the front camera view. I've got my camera views mapped to the numerical keys on my keyboard. So I'm going to jump through to the front view. I'm going to grab that text. And I'm going to move it up a little bit. Now you can see actually my bevel has actually pushed the whole object below the baseline. The baseline is this, this red line here. And you can see that the bottom of the N, if it wasn't extruded and it didn't have the bevel, would be right on that line, but the bevel's just taking it around. So I'm going to bring it up. I'm actually going to set the bottom of the bevel on the O right on that line. That'll do. Okay, so we've got our object in place. The perspective looks roughly all right. What I might do actually, looking at that, is just extrude that a little bit deeper. So we've got the Z direction going minus 0.3. We'll just go up to. Whoop, Let's try minus 0.5. Yeah, just take it back a little further. And I'm probably just going to push that up a little bit. Just frame the, the scene a little bit better. Okay, the other thing we're going to need is a floor. Some kind of floor object to catch the shadows. 
Now you will have seen me do this before with the shadow matte material. I've, I've done tutorial on that before. I'm going to stretch that out just so it's roughly big enough to catch the shadow both directions and push it into the right place. I'm just doing this by eye, I'm not going to jump into the different camera used to do this. Um, so we've got our float, that's alright, looks big enough to catch our shadows, maybe just a little bit bigger. Nothing too crazy. And we're going to add a couple of materials now. So the first material we want is special, and um, we'll put the shadow mat on. So we've got our shadow mat, that's going to catch the shadows on the floor, so we'll drop that on the floor like that. You can see that's attributed to the plane that we're using for the floor right there. And then I'm going to make a new material, just usual kind of thing, let's pick a colour. I'm going to keep it quite light. Do what you want, pick something that works well with your photo. I'm really just kind of winging it on this one a little bit. I'm going to give it a little bit of reflection, not too much. i just drag that reflection colour up a little bit. I start to see that appearing down here. I'm going to check uh, for an L option, which I always do, um, for that kind of more realistic reflection effect, I guess I'd say. So, we've got our object, which we haven't put the material on, I've had to do that now, actually, I dragged that on, drop it on there. So we've got our material on that, we've got our floor, we've got our photo, perspective looks good. We, we haven't do, done, we haven't lit the scene at all. I'm going to select my camera object. And I'm going to add, first of all, a radiosity tag. I'm going to leave that set to be an occlusion. And secondly, I'm going to add a HDRI tag. Now, in an ideal situation, we've actually got a 360 degree panoramic shot of this scene. So it would light this object absolutely perfectly. Now, that, that doesn't always happen. If you just found the photo online or something like that, um, you're not going to have that. Now, you can get by by just loading in and the same JPEG that you used for your background. That's what we're going to do here. The reflections will not be perfect, but in terms of lighting that it throws out, it's going to be pretty good. So we load that in. We're going to turn that off background. We don't want that showing in the background. That would that would replace our background on our camera object completely. So let's uncheck that. Um, we may need to tweak the white point on the shadow map material. But I think we're ready to render on that front. Let's give that a render. Okay, so that's starting to shape up. I'm rendered a little bit too small. I'm going to I'm going to double the size of this. It's actually it's pretty important to match the camera output dimensions to be the same as your photo. Otherwise, it's going to stretch it. I'll show you that now. If I bring that in, you can see it's it's stretching that. Those houses are looking a bit weird. Um, so we're at 640, so we're going to go 12, 8, 8 by 9, my maths is really bad, 960 I believe it is. Yeah, it looks right. Somebody will tell me if I've got that wrong. Okay, so I'm going to give that another render now. You guys will be able to see this a little bit better now. You see all these renders here that I've been doing, I'm always rendering loads of different stuff. Okay, so it's coming in. And you can see that the lighting is actually pretty good. It, it appears to be lit quite well for that scene. Um, feels about right. Shadow mats out. Um, we can obviously see the whole plane. So what we need to do is adjust the white point on there. So let's do that now. Click on our shadow mat material. Go to our white point. And I could see that it needed some heavy tweaking that. So I'm going to jump down in fairly big steps. 0 0.7. I think it may need to go a little bit further than that. But... Let's give it a render and see what happens. Doesn't hurt to do a render when you're not sure. Okay, we're getting there. You can see the plane starting to disappear a little bit. Shadows on the object are looking pretty good where they're hitting the floor. Now, you can, like I mentioned before, this photo is not ideal because I've got these long winter shadows. Um, and they obviously go completely against what I'm doing, but you get the idea. If you've got a photo that doesn't have these long shadows, you're not going to have that problem. Uh, reflections, I've only got some light reflections in there, and they're kind of alright, I'm quite happy with that. Okay, so let's push this white point a little bit further. I'll try 0.6, because we were nearly there last time. One more render. I'm hoping this one's going to be the final one, actually.
Okay, that's great. I can't see the plane anymore, but I can see the shadows that it's casting. And that's looking pretty good. That's that's pretty much it for this one. Obviously, you can do what you want. You can throw whatever objects you want into your scene now. If you've got something that you've made up and you need it to fit into a photo, this is this is one approach to doing that. It works pretty well. It's quick to do. Um, it's a little bit... It's not perfect because we're using just a, an ordinary JPEG as an HDR, um, which isn't perfect, but as you can see, it, it does a job and it, it lights things pretty well. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, thanks for watching, guys, and if you create anything, as usual, post it, let me know, send me an email, anything like that. I'm always, uh, always up to seeing what you're making. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.